So, Secrets of Kundalini with Mariah Pelley Smith. So we are going to be doing a Q&A now. So I have a list of 16 questions about Kundalini Yoga that we are going to be going through. So let me lubricate and then we'll get down to a business. All right. <laughs> so the first question is, when do I breathe? So, <laughs> so in what I'm teaching, I'm saying like, inhale, hold the breath. And then you hold it for a long time and you release. And then I tell you to inhale again. And that's a very direct inhale release. But there's some movements like the Sat Kriya. So for example, <laughs> When we're in Sat Kriya, we're sitting on our heels and we're interlacing our hands. And, you know, we'll get into specifics with this specific thing because that's not what we're doing today is Sat Kriya. But we have our arms above head and we're like, Sat Nam, Sat Nam. So you're doing that Sat Nam for three minutes, preferably. Um, yes, please. <laughs> and um, when you're doing that, you're trying to figure out, well, where do I breathe? Like, so I'm doing the Sat, I'm still holding the breath. The nom, okay, but you have to try to find a space between the nom and the next sat in order to breathe. And the body's like, what am I going to breathe? And then you come out of that sat nom, you come out of that rhythm because you're trying to find a breath. So what I've learned when I'm doing the sat nom is you're trying to look for sips. So you're building a relationship with that kriya, with for example, the Sat Kriya, you're, you're building relationships so you know when to breathe. So when I'm doing Sat Kriya, it's like Sat Nam. And then after that Nam, I do a little bit of a sip of air and that pulls me into the next Sat Nam. Again, sip. And I'm like, I have to be very disciplined with it so that I'm keeping the pace for the students. Because if I'm like Sat Nam, <sighs> So like, you know, that like, kind of ruins the vibe. <laughs> so you have to find a space. And another one would be um, when we're doing, what's, what would be another one be? Um, Sat Nam. Um, okay, when we're doing, when we're doing the HUD, HUD, HUD. So when we're doing the prosperity mantra, HUD, 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 and you're, you're trying to keep a pace again. Well, when do I breathe? So you need to build a relationship with the mantra. Of course, I'm keeping a certain pace, but when you're doing it by yourself, it could be HUD, HUD. Like you might breathe through your mouth in order to get that sip. Or you might do a slight little inhale when, between the HUDs. You find that space, and that's the beauty of part of the beauty of the kundalini is like you have to learn where you fit in in that meditation um another one is um do to do, do so how do you pronounce mantra so example sat nam so when i say i can say sat nam or i can say sat nam so when we're pronouncing mantra we want to bring confidence to it. We are trying to activate that mantra within our being. So Sat Nam means truth is my identity. So we always want to speak from our navel point. So when we're doing mantra, we want to speak from here because there's a difference of like Sat Nam, like, you know, that's not really doing anything for anyone. So it wants to be Sat, so that that pulling in of the navel because that's that's our energy source energy comes in through the solar plexus hits the the root chakra then spirals up so we want to feed this part of the body and we want to speak from that space as well there has to be a depth in sound when we're speaking so that's a point of how to pronounce mantras make sure we're speaking from the navel and then also pronunciation. <laughs> so, you know, Hatko de Name, Jugatko de Name, Satko de Name, Sirikutu de Vename. So, pronouncing mantra, I did a whole like week thing <laughs> with Rama Institute, Guru Jagat, and all the other amazing teachers about how to pronounce. So, when we're pronouncing, there's a whole other language with the tongue and the way it hits the palate. So, when we're doing like even the, the tune in, the ong, like we want to make sure that our tongue is hitting top of the palate. We're trying to get that pronunciation, not only in the navel, but in the vibration of our palate so that it hits the penal gland. Like it's a, it's a very intentional, the reason why we're saying it in a specific way. So it's, we're looking at 
the navel point. <laughs> we're looking at where the tongue is. And then we're also looking at, so this mantra sounds like this to me. How do, how do I pronounce the mantra? So what I've learned from these sort of teachings is the mantra is very powerful when you listen to it. And that's why I have mantra just chilling in the background right now. I don't have rights to this music. <laughs> but the mantra becomes more powerful when you fall in love with the mantra, when you build a relationship with the mantra. So one of the mantras that I've fallen in love with is Hud, Hud, Makinde. So there's a there's an airiness, there's a sensualness, there's a there's an earthiness to when I speak that because that is healing something in with within me every time I pronounce it. So when you're like, I don't know about this mantra, well, maybe that's not a mantra that you're supposed to be using all the time. So of course, if you're in one of my classes, I want you to say the mantra. But if you're building a relationship with a different mantra, find one that you like to say, because at first when the mantra is coming in, sometimes it's like, ooh, I don't want that. But there's a tipping point with that mantra when it's like, you actually go to it every time you feel anxious. You go to it every time you feel sad. And you again, you're trying to build a relationship. Another question is, um, how do I sit for long periods of time? <laughs> so your handy dandy pillow is going to be what you need. So when you are starting meditation in general, just seated pose, you want to have a little bit of a lift. So between your butt and your legs so that your legs are lower than your butt. <laughs> um, and that will help with the blood circulation. But if you can sit flatly on the ground, then fantastic. But that little lift will get you very, very far. Um, how do I know when to say mantra aloud or internally? So when we're looking at Kriyas, Kriyas are exercises that are specific need to be done in a specific order because they have a specific purpose for the body and all of the bodies and all the things. So when we're doing, um, do, 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 when we're doing these Kriyas, it's going to tell you, say this aloud or say this internally. It's going to be, it's going to tell you. And if it doesn't say it out loud. <laughs> so when we're doing this, HUD, HUD, that's specific. We need to do that. And then this, SAT, TA, NA, MA, SAT, TA, NA, MA. When we're doing this, of course, you can do that aloud in your space, but maybe you're in a space where you can't say it out loud and you like you feel like you need that right now, you can say it internally really loud. You can play with your internal volume as well. Um, what is a root lock? Great question. <laughs> so a root lock is when you're pulling in, you're like, you're squeezing your butt. <laughs> like you have to pee, like all of the muscles in your lower part of your body is all clenched. So nothing can move out. So when we're inhaling, holding the root lock, so everything's tight below, we're creating a potency with the energy within the system. So nothing, so I like, we don't want no leaky butts over here. <laughs> so when we pull everything up, the energy can't leak out through the bottom. So when that, when you're getting downloads and information, you hold it in and that transfers to other practices as well. So when I'm doing Reiki and I'm like, and I'm like, like I'm holding my breath for like long periods of time when I'm doing psychic surgery or when I'm doing, different types of movements because the potency of the way the Reiki is moving through me, it requires that extra hold on the bottom. Um, bum, ba, dum. How often should I practice? So of course, <laughs> I want you guys to be practicing every day, all day. But I know, you know, you may not have three hours to do like the most intense, glorious Kundalini set you've ever seen. <laughs> so what I love about this practice is that it's a householder's practice. So you can do one minute, three minutes, 11 minutes of one meditation, and it will change the way that you enter your day. You just have to commit to that. So because as a householder, like my go-to situation is, of course, I do the tune-in. I'll get into the format in a sec. But I do my tune-in. I do my cat-cow. I do my intelligence meditation. I do my addiction meditation. We'll go through the PDFs later. Um, and I do my Sarah Bin Dundays. I do... Um, I do my beauty set, which I found amazing for the skin. We'll do a whole video on that. Um, literally, I was like, whoa, what's even going on? <laughs> my eyes were like 18 times bigger. It was intense. Um, <laughs> beauty set, um, prosperity mantra. I know it sounds like a lot, but if you're only doing one to three minutes, you're fine. You're good. To, you're golden. You're good to go. 
Um, anything else? Do, do, do. Some frog pose, throw that in there. Um, so I kind of, I have like a mishmash of different kriyas that I do just to make sure that I'm ready to go. Um, but if I'm like really want to go hard, then I'll do the foundations of infinity, which we did do live for the new year's thing. And that video is up on the platform, but we'll go through that.